For today's sponsor we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Assassin's Creed Odyssey features a narrative set in the modern day and follows Leila Hassan, an Egyptian-American Abstergo researcher who was introduced in Assassin's Creed Origins. It also follows the same storyline, but although the main story follows, the game events are actually occurring about 400 years before, being set in the years 431 to 422 before Christ, with the plot being a mythological history of the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta. The story itself starts in the modern times when Leila recovers the spear of Leonidas and extracts the DNA of two individuals from it, further activating the animus with the objective of finding the location of the Staff of Hermes. This gives the player the ability to choose a male character, Alexios, or a female one, Cassandra, but independently from the one you choose, you'll still have the same story, in this case being a mercenary, which in-game is called by the ancient Greek name Mystios. I finished the main story and I really enjoyed it, even more the final missions that completely blew my mind. To follow the main story, we later got the Fate of Atlantis DLC that follows the character's quest to learn and unlock the full power of the Staff of Hermes. This DLC focuses more on the Greek mythology and brings us some new maps like Fields of Elysium, Hades Underworld and Atlantis, giving us the fresh breeze that the game really needed. Assassin's Creed Valhalla starts one year after the Atlantis event in Assassin's Creed Odyssey with the unexplained and continual strengthening of the Earth's magnetic field that has started to disrupt global satellite communications and is adversely affecting the environment. The assassins then receive a mysterious signal leading to the coordinates in New England where Leila, Sean and Rebecca exhume the remains of the 9th century Norwegian Viking. I could tell you way more interesting things, but I would really spoil both games. <laughs> As for the Viking story, the event occurs around the year 873 after Christ and you now play as Eivor, that can be a woman or a man, and the game actually has a third option where it alternates in between both according to the signal strength. You start the game as young Eivor during a feast honoring the King Styrbjorn of the Raven Clan. Then things go wrong and Eivor witnesses the sacking and killing of his clan by Kjotve the Cruel. He still manages to escape with the help of Sigurd, the King Styrbjorn's son. But doing so, Eivor gets mauled by a wolf, getting the nickname Wolf Kissed. Seventeen years later, the character is adopted by the Raven Clan and relentlessly pursues Kjotve the Cruel. The last attempt fails, but the character manages to get his father's axe and upon touching it, experiences a vision with Odin. And that sets the trail to a very interesting adventure. I have already more than 50 hours in this game and I still didn't manage to finish the main story, but I can tell you right away that it is way more polished than Odyssey. The Brotherhood also returns to the series and Eivor gets the classic hidden blade. You also get several maps like Norway, England, Vinland and even Asgard and Jotunheim, without the need of any DLCs, giving the game a little less of that repetitive feeling that we had presented in Odyssey and making the story way more enjoyable, not even counting with the storytelling that is vastly superior in Valhalla. As for the base gameplay, we have major changes. In Odyssey you have no place that you can call home, while in Valhalla you have one and it plays an important role in the game. That settlement is like a little village where the Raven Clan lives and you have lots of things there, from tattoo and barber shops where you can change your character's appearance, to things like a stable where you can train and get new skins for your horse. You can even upgrade your facilities or create new ones with the goods that you get from plundering other villages. I also felt like Odyssey lacked a bit of focus. 
you're a mercenary that does contracts, but then you decide to search for your family, and then you discover that you're somehow a demigod or something close to that, and the next time you look around, you're doing favors to gods in Atlantis, which sometimes feels a little disconnected. But maybe it's just me. In Valhalla, you clearly know that all the missions are completed with one thing in mind, securing the Raven Clan position in England by getting allies across the land. That can lead you to things like eliminating a Saxon king, finding traitors in between your soon-to-be allies, and even helping with castle raids. And since I mentioned castle raids, they are pretty fun to do also. A bit repetitive, yeah, but still fun and definitely way better than the war games that we had in Odyssey. In Valhalla you also have way more activities to do, like drinking battles, flighting, which is like a woods battle, target shooting and even fishing, this in between many others. You even have a special mystery missions that have completely different approach from the side quests we're used to do, and this is a thing that was never presented in the series before. Now, in terms of leveling progress, the word I like to use to describe how Odyssey works is grinding. I mean, sometimes the game just feels like an endless search for XP and I found myself doing lots of side quests before going to the main ones. Not really because I wanted to, but mostly because I needed a level up. And that leads us to one of the most, if not the most annoying point in any game, which is the microtransactions. It's like Odyssey was made with that in mind, like they really really wanted to make the game mostly about leveling up and getting better items so that people felt the need of buying those XP boosts. Gladly, Ubisoft fixed that in Valhalla by simply removing the XP boosters and making the levels less relevant. Of course that if you want to fight stronger enemies you still have to be cautious, but you can easily follow the flow and keep doing the main quests one after another without even thinking about levels. Just to finish this part, I also enjoyed one change made in Valhalla, which is the fact that you now have points of interest across the sky, making them very easy to follow, but at the same time, the raven now gives you a less accurate direction instead of giving you the precise one, actually balancing things a bit. Small, but interesting changes in my opinion. In terms of combat, Valhalla is just so much better than Odyssey, as they completely redesigned the way it works. The combat fluidity is much better and less forced. For example, the player finally has a stamina bar that depletes with movement and attacks depending on your weapon's weight or if you're doing light or heavy attacks. And also some stronger AI characters like the bosses for example also have some type of shield or stamina bar that deplete us as we parry their attacks or do armor breaking combos like the heavy attack ones. And once we break that shield we can actually make a combo finisher that will be different depending on the type of the opponent you are using it on. Valhalla also implemented a much more natural healing system using rations instead of having a healing ability like in Odyssey. Those rations can be bought or gathered from some types of bushes when exploring the world. I have almost 90 hours in AC Odyssey and close to 60 in Valhalla, and I can tell you that Valhalla brought lots of things that were missing in Odyssey, like the Predator's Bow from AC Origins, the Hidden Blade and the ability to kill almost anyone with a stealth attack. A stupid thing that happens in Odyssey is that the stealth killing is based on your damage and the opponent's level. Basically meaning that if you slash a sleeping soldier's throat with a 30 cm blade but his level is too high for you, he'll simply get up like nothing happened and that just makes the stealth gameplay completely useless. Valhalla fixes that by having a red target that you have to hit in the right time in order to make a one-hit kill, and that same target gets smaller according to how many levels above you your opponent is. Or, if you want it, you can enable the guaranteed assassination option in the gameplay menu. Valhalla also brought back the hiding mechanics, where you can use your cloak to hide from your enemies or simply blend in by sitting in a bench and having a drink. And you can even lure the drunks to cause a mess so you can pass unnoticed. Those mechanics and the fact that the Brotherhood is back and plays a main role in the game makes Valhalla feel more like a real Assassin's Creed game than Odyssey ever did. Now, as for skills and abilities, Odyssey has the Abilities tab where you can select and upgrade your abilities, and that's it. 
Your other stats were implemented in armor and weapon sets, meaning that although you really liked the aspect of one particular set, what you liked and what you needed could be entirely different things. They later introduced the ability of changing the equipment's aspect, but in my opinion it just feels like not right at all. This is because it had absolutely no cost, making things way too easy. That same ability to change your equipment's aspect is also presented in Valhalla, but now it isn't free and you're only able to do it by going to a blacksmith. As for skills and abilities, you now have two separate tabs. The abilities are like special skills, let's call them that. For example, using poison in your blades or even slow motion bow shots that can be attained by finding ancient documents around the world. The skills tab is the new thing here and it is also the most interesting one. So basically the melee, ranged and stealth points that were before attached to the equipment were moved into this skill tree. That as you level up lets you select the path you want to take independently of your armor choices. In between the common skills, which are usually passive, you have the ones I like to call combat skills, which are the ones that you can unlock after getting a certain number of points in a certain ramification and will grant you certain abilities depending on the path you follow. For example, one of the most badass in the melee ramification is the heavy dual wield that lets you use one two-handed weapon in each hand, meaning that you can for example use two great swords instead of just one, which is simply badass. And there are things like the ability to kill an enemy by throwing another dead soldier's weapon and chain assassinations that aren't now presented as an ability but instead as a combat skill that can be used at any time. As for the equipment, as said before, Odyssey had melee, ranged and assassin stats across the equipment and the same equipment had levels, so higher levels in your character would unlock higher levels to your equipment that would get you higher stats, kind of obligating you from time to time to go to a blacksmith and raise all your equipment levels, which I found to be annoying after some time. In Valhalla, a completely different approach was taken. A better one, gladly. The defensive equipment now only has armor, evasion, light resistance, heavy resistance and weight stats, while the offensive equipment has the attack, speed, stun, critical chance and weight ones, which makes so much more sense. I mean, it is commonly known that different types of armor will give you more or less defense against light or heavy attacks, but it is kind of stupid that a stealth armor will give more damage to your dagger. I guess you're following my point here. In terms of equipment upgrading, both Odyssey and Valhalla have 4 quality grades. In Odyssey they are common, rare, epic and legendary, while in Valhalla they are fine, superior, flawless and mythical. But Odyssey and Valhalla have a big difference here. Imagine you got a loot equipment that has superior quality. In Valhalla, you can simply go to the blacksmith and with the right materials, upgrade that superior equipment to flawless or even mythical. And that works for almost any armor or weapon. Raising the quality level will most of times change the equipment's aspect, but it won't change the equipment's stats, but instead will change its potential. The higher the quality, the more upgrading slots you'll have and those slots are the ones that will increase your equipment stats and can be upgraded by just going to your inventory. In Odyssey things were different. If you got a common equipment, there was no way you could improve it apart from level. Basically, if it had low potential, it would stay with low potential forever. And to change the equipment's level you needed to go constantly to the blacksmith as you leveled up, so you could level up your equipment as well. Which, like I said before, it's annoying and kind of breaks the game's flow. Well, as for the AI, I didn't do a full analysis since I was busy enjoying the games, but there are some things I can say. Both games have decent AI, being it in terms of combat or daily tasks. Valhalla though has more types of AI that will make the combat more alive, because they have different animations. The animations will differ in attack, defense, shield breaking and even healing. The AI also tends to do more simultaneous attacks making you feel the need of dodging. Basically, Valhalla is like Odyssey, but better. There's one thing that Odyssey has that Valhalla doesn't though. Curious? 
So, the thing is that when you're attacking soldiers in some particular locations of the map, the civilians will grab weapons from the dead soldiers and will start attacking you as well. And in all my hours of Valhalla, I did not see that happen. And if you ask me, it would make way more sense to defend your village against plundering Vikings than getting full Rambo and fight a demigod that just killed tons of soldiers way stronger than you. But I mean, who am I to say anything? In terms of design, both worlds look amazing, and Ubisoft did a magnificent work while reconstructing the ancient Greek cities and the ancient lands of England. In terms of aesthetics, I do prefer Valhalla since it has more color and to me it just feels more pleasant to explore. And don't get me wrong, Odyssey world design was great, but I guess I just like how much cozier Valhalla world feels to me. As for the size, Odyssey's map is way bigger than Valhalla's one, mostly because it has much more ocean area since the game was designed with naval battles in mind. But the size of the map and exploration world don't mean much by themselves without one particular aspect in mind, the aliveness of the explorable world. Odyssey had much more ocean space for naval battles, like I said before, but those same battles were repetitive and the ocean had nothing interesting to see besides that. So, although Valhalla's world is smaller, it is also way funnier to explore. You have NPCs doing walks in the woods from time to time, enemy patrols, people working in their lands, more animals are presented also in the woods, and you can even pet some animals like dogs, cats and even your own wolf. And like I said before, you can do several activities like raids, assaults and more peaceful ones like hunting, fishing, flighting, which will help you with your persuading skills, and even drinking and dice minigames. You also have the world events, that are different from the usual side quests we're used to see in Odyssey. Because they won't necessarily put you in a quest line, they can be simple things like playing hide and seek with a little girl, or helping two men knowing which one of them set their house on fire, and they are pretty fun. Naval battles are also a thing in Valhalla, and I myself prefer the naval navigation in Valhalla. It is so much more pleasant since you can look at the world while navigating, instead of just seeing endless sea. And we now have an interesting feature where you can select to have someone telling a story or having the full crew singing, which is one of the details that I like the most. Overall, both worlds look great in their own way, but Valhalla just has much more to do and to explore without things getting repetitive. As for graphics, they both look wonderful in their own way, with Valhalla being overall superior in terms of lighting, tessellation and more. As it should, I mean, the game is two years younger. But in terms of graphics, it's always better to watch a side-by-side -side comparison. In this test, both games are running at 1440p and max settings in order to have no deviations due to different graphical options. Let's go! Well, first of all I'm letting you know that I won't do a complex comparison here, since we already have a pretty big video, but I will instead compare the basic things. Now, we're gonna look at the character models. Alexios in Odyssey already has a pretty good face model, even for today's standards, showing you several skin details like the little dark circles in the eyes, skin pores and even the hair and beard that are still pretty acceptable. Although, Eivor's face model is just more detailed than Alexia's one in several aspects. The skin details are visibly better, with more pores showing instead of some blurred areas like in Alexia's ones of course, and the skin grading is also a bit more realistic. One of the major differences for me is the hair and beard. In Valhalla they look much better due to having a slight shadow in the character's face, making them feel much more realistic. For example, in Odyssey the hair above the forehead lacks depth, this due to having no shadows around it, making it look artificial, while in Valhalla it seems way more natural due to having those. And if you look at the beard the difference the shadow makes is even bigger. In Odyssey, if you look closely it seems like someone just glued a beard on Alexios, while in Valhalla Eivor's beard looks full, consistent and with depth. Now, for the armor models we can quickly see differences, and this is where I think that Odyssey actually gets the upper hand. 
Apart from really specific armor sets, all the sea armor models and textures were really good. And while armor sets are also well done in Valhalla, they aren't overall as well made as in Odyssey. Because we have a mix of very good textures with some low quality ones. And sadly, you can notice that in most sets if you zoom in a bit. In terms of overall graphics, Valhalla handles the lighting and the ambient occlusion in a better way, making the game feel more realistic. We also have improved floor tessellation, and while most of Odyssey's floor feel like printed sheets of paper, in Valhalla we actually have some depth, and in snow regions your character will even leave a trail behind, which is very nice. In terms of dirt floor, it seems the textures have similar quality, with Valhalla having only a bit more detail and, as stated before, better floor depth. In terms of wooden materials, we do have a good improvement in Valhalla, at least in this comparison, with more details being shown like depth, casted shadows and even better textures across all the wooden boards, which make them look way more realistic. Now with marble and tiled floors the difference is once again noticeable, and while Odyssey is way better in this scenario than in the previous ones, with better overall textures and more depth, Valhalla is still superior, with way more details. The depth is so much more realistic that it seems like a real floor, with several colors of dirt in between the tiles and even with some of them being damaged and having slightly different distances. As for wall textures, in this particular scenario Odyssey stands really well once again. The marble rocks have way more detail and some of them have depth, even casting a small shadow, and even have the moss, that helps in terms of aesthetics and depth. Here I would say that both games are more or less on par, with Valhalla having a bit more detail in the rocks and a bit more depth. But we're talking about two different materials, and marble won't have as many variations as a normal rock, and this is why I consider them on par. Overall three textures are also improved in Odyssey, with once again more of the same, better details and more depth. In these three presented in Odyssey, the textures just look flat in most parts and lack ambient occlusion to add realism. And of course, not even talking about the details themselves, that are way lower in Odyssey. Now let's go to the foliage, a really important part in terms of realism. One thing is apparent, the density of the vegetation. Vegetation's density is much bigger in Valhalla. This department is usually where AC games tend to strive, and Odyssey isn't the exception, with a really good level of foliage and vegetation quality. But Valhalla is just so much better with way more vegetation. Once again, the vegetation just looks fuller and with an astonishing level of quality and depth, making the game reach a higher level of realism. Also, if you're asking yourself what happens when you pass through the vegetation, this is what happens. In both games, the vegetation will move as you move through it, which is really nice to see. Now let's go to another important part, the water slash sea. Both games have a wonderful implementation in terms of water mechanics and both are gorgeous to look at. I think we can't do a proper comparison because in Odyssey we have the sea, while in Valhalla we have rivers, and that affects the movement of the water and depth, making things harder to compare. But if you put those details aside and look simply at what pleases your vision, I would have to say that once again Valhalla looks better. But I mean, that is actually expected since Valhalla has the obligation of being better, since it was released two years after Odyssey. As for swimming, Valhalla focuses way more on the splashing effects made by the hands and feet. They are also presented in Odyssey, but way less in terms of quantity and precision. But well, we can argue that Eivor just swims more aggressively. <laughs> Reaching the land we can see that both are soaked from swimming, being more apparent in Valhalla and drying faster in Odyssey. As for the fire effects, let's start with the usual torch. 
As you can see here, there are no doubts that the Valhalla fire effects are superior in every aspect. The fire from the torch looks way better and more natural, and it actually flows with the wind and movements that the character does, so if Eivor bounces a bit to the right, the flame will change. But when Alexios does the same, the flame stays exactly the same, which is not realistic. Now let's go to the smoke effects produced by fire, which as can be seen are vastly superior in Valhalla. It is just not a matter of having more or less, but instead its density and flow. The fire propagation is also better in Valhalla, and now, when you raid the village and burn its houses, the air will get filled with ashes and the light change due to that, which is a very nice addition to the game. As I said sometimes, both games look wonderful, and Valhalla is obviously an Odyssey upgrade in almost every aspect. And before going to the sound part, let me just tell you that one of the things that I like the most in both games is the dynamic weather. You can see several times the shadows shifting as the day moves on, or as the clouds pass by the sun, bringing this realistic feeling to the games. Valhalla does it a bit better, but both games are definitely astonishing in this aspect. As for the sound design, I think both games are very good when we're talking about the soundtrack. What I can tell you right away is about the voice quality and sound effects. In terms of quality itself, it is very low in both games and the audio files shouldn't be as compressed as they are, because that is why the sound most of the times feels muffled, and it is more noticeable in Valhalla when using headphones. Another problem that Valhalla has is the out-of-balance sound levels, with this I mean that sometimes you can actually hear people passing on the street with clearer and higher sound level than your character in a conversation, and it isn't the worst. The most annoying problem that I found in Valhalla is the excessive echo and reverb in voices. Here's an example. For yourself. We did. Or rather, we came so that Hytham could kill him. My apprentice has been studying this target for many months. Is Kjotve's reputation so great outside Norway? In most cases we're inside buildings where Echo would definitely be a thing in real life, and sometimes Eivor is just thinking to himself, or herself. In those situations I completely agree with having Echo and Reverb, although it could be a bit less, but it just makes no sense at all that we're hearing Echo in the middle of a cornfield when talking normally to another person, and to some people the excessive Reverb and Echo may even cause headaches, and that makes me think how can a professional sound team let a game like this have this kind of mistakes? Time to change the sound director, I guess. <laughs> now about what I like the most. I can say that the differences in terms of overall gaming experience are that big, and while I enjoyed AC Odyssey a lot, and I certainly love some characters, I think that Valhalla is just so much more complete. Overall the game offers you much more than Odyssey, with a much better combat system, better AI and less repetitive experience in terms of main quests and world events, that now replace the classic side quests, and even when you're done doing those, you still have much more to do and explore compared to Odyssey. I also like the small differences made to the game, like the fact that the climbing and sprinting keys are now different. In Odyssey, both the sprinting and the climbing were assigned to the same key, Shift, while in Valhalla, you have the Shift key for running and the Space key to actually climb. Small things that made a big difference for me. Just to conclude, I think that AC Valhalla was a major step forward compared to Odyssey, but I think it could be even better if they added like a 4K texture pack and a better audio quality overall. But still, I enjoyed both games. And well guys, I just really want to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because I easily have like over 40 hours of work in this video, over that, so over a week worth of work uh, just for this video, so don't forget like, subscribe and share it. Also, once again, thanks a lot for watching, and if you're watching this part, leave a comment in the comment section saying, I'm watching this part, 
because I really want to know how many people are actually watching it till the end. Thanks a lot and hope you really enjoyed the video.